uh, we are willing to collaborate and I am willing to collaborate and Joyce I know is willing to collaborate as well but it's a skill that we practice and yeah we're willing to practice But if, if I may say also, I think more than anything, if there's one thing that I want for agencies and brands to know at this time as well is we could, you know, maximize the new normal. I think this new normal is an opportunity. There are a lot of pain points that we could address because of the new normal. And I feel like that openness between the two sides of the agency, the brands, and the talents, kung open parehas, diba? it's it's easier to collaborate. You know, we're, we're so excited to jump on calls, to go into meetings, to think about new ideas, to think about new campaigns together. And I think having the new normal set up has made that easier. Because we have nowhere to go, guys. Literal, kung gusto nyo ng meeting bukas, pwede kami mag-meeting bukas. Di ba, Mick and Megan? Joyce, mamaya na yung meeting. Mamaya, Wag na bukas. Okay, Agad-agad ba pa? Mamaya na. Ano pa sila? May game show pa sila later. <laughs> Kahit before the game show or after the game show. <laughs> um, it's, I, I think it's the, it's the biggest question that any brand has with uh, working with celebrities, right? So, how do you monitor or evaluate the performance of your influence, right? Is there... Um, is there something that you typically share, or, or yeah, what what can you know us brand managers or us agencies you know, kind of take home and show to our you know, our clients or our bosses uh, in terms of uh, being able to, I guess, measure success working with you guys. For this one, I think this is a this can be answered in so in different, so ways, different ways. To be yeah. honest with you, so one way that I imagine. Um, one way that I imagine is to give them the metrics and to really just share that. And insights are always asked from us after after uh, a project. And I, from my understanding, uh, the agency is the one that pulls out and extrapolates whatever analytics they find relevant to present for the brand. Now, I'm actually interested what metrics are the most important for agencies because that was the exact question that we brought up yesterday last night so and i know it's different for i know that it changes from time to time changes maybe depending on the goals changes depending on how the analytics are read uh but i am curious because i've never really gotten a straight answer for that one and from the flip side of it um there's the creative aspect where the brand, let's say the brand reached out to us and there's the assumption that, oh, okay, you see, we've shared our metrics already, our historical metrics, and we know what kind of project we want to execute. And when we execute, the assumption is that, oh, okay, we just push this, we just create the best work that we can and then push it out to the audience as in the best way that we can. And what happens will happen because at the same time, you're looking for organic views. To a certain extent, that organic quality will kind of reign supreme with the content that you have. And then of course, there are other ways where you're gonna go for the inorganic route, which for me, I think can be used even more. I mean, the paid, uh, paid ads or boosting, I think there are more, I think that there are more creative ways to even use that even further. But I think parang there's the organic quality that people always look for. But I think there is a way to maximize boosting. And Mama B and I always discuss this. But yeah, this is just these are just conversations that happen on our team's end. So it's it would be super nice to get insight from the other side. And maybe out of this conversation, something amazing comes out. I can I can chime in there a little bit. So the specialty actually of our agency, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, it's being able to measure these kinds of things. And nice. um, when I look at celebrity influencers, um, I think you have to be able to measure you know your your impact uh, depending on uh, where the where the campaign is at uh, on, in the customer's journey. Um, I think it's very. I think it's great that for you guys, you're very open to sharing your your metrics, right? So how much, uh, how many, uh, how much reach you have, how many impressions. I think being able to measure that as a brand is really important. And there isn't any, you know, it's it's ambiguous for you guys because it's also ambiguous for us that uh, even us at some point it kind of gets blurry as to you know what's the value of. Uh, an impression for a brand, right? What's the value of a reach? 
And I think that's where, you know, both brand and celebrities kind of have to work together. Um, in terms of, you know, reaching impressions for the celebrities, I think being open with your metrics is the most important thing that you guys can do. And then for the brand, it's also managing expectations because it's it's very difficult to, to, to find the mon- to calculate the monetary value of one post, right? And um, I think as long as you're you're having these discussions and for the brand also, as long as there's an effort to try to, you know, um, put two and two together, right? You see the the celebrity reach and you see <clears throat> the, the the monetary value of uh, that uh, the, the next few days or the next few weeks. I think that's the the best that you guys can really do. Okay, uh, next question from Isabel. Isabel, do you want to say hi to our panel before we ask your question? Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Um, and hi, Isabel. Thank you, VTM, for like um, creating this webinar. It's really helpful for um, agencies like um, me to, to really understand how to talk to celebrities so that we get to know what you guys need, what you guys are thinking whenever we um, have a campaign with you. So thank you so much, VCM. Isabel's question is, how long should the lead time be if we wanted to roll out a campaign with celebrities? Um, well, for me, judging from my story, I guess it's eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, I mean that was a shoot. That was a that was a shoot, and it was a multi-episode shoot uh, that's coming out digitally. And um, but if it come when it comes to like uh, content like YouTube or a podcast, uh, bones for the podcast maybe like two weeks, three weeks, depending on the schedule and the load that we have. If we have sponsors planning lined up. If we have sponsors lined up already uh, for YouTube, but relative the actual work time that it takes for us, maybe around 40 work hours, maybe from shooting to editing and refining and conceptualizing the caption, shooting the thumbnail. So that's that's work hours. So you can divide those work hours to. I mean, if you want to shoot in two days and sleep four hours a day, then you can do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, usually it also depends on how much load we have. So I think there have been times when Megan and I have been asked, "Hey, kaya nyo ba to? And I think that's really important, especially if they know na uh, medyo gipit. So what we can do is we really just be open. Oh, okay, we have this, we have this. We can squeeze you in here and create the content here and make sure that it's finished for you guys to review. And then there's allowance for revisions. Um, so, but yeah, but lead time, the actual work hours to do it. I'm, I even, I'm sure even for Joyce, for her podcast, uh, I mean, you can literally ask us to do something right now. and. For not doing anything, we'll shoot it right now. <laughs> I know Joyce can do that. I know she's on top of that. But Megan and I were also on top of that. Yeah, no, see, oh, the bar. Two seconds, the month. If I have eight hours, two seconds, si Joyce. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I think it, it, I think it's exactly that. And honestly, it also depends on the content because if it's a yeah. photo, like recently, you know, w- with with Mikael, it's it's a shoot, so you just have to show up. If you're free, you show up. Then then well, it's good, right? Um, yesterday, I just did like. A uh, they, they told me the night before that hey Joyce it's arriving the products that we need you to shoot you have to shoot it and then the posting is tomorrow it's just a photo hindi naman masyadong picky si client you know they approved kaagad they approved the caption kaagad it's easy because it's just a photo but as Mick mentioned if it's a video or a podcast or something that's a bit more long format uh, a bit of lead time would be highly appreciated but if hindi naman kaya then maybe we could find a work around it oh I have one story to share I have one. Thank you for sharing that, Joyce. That made me trigger the memory. Um, given that we, I think Joyce and Megan and I, we say this when things are talked about prior. So we're talking about schedules. But I have been, I have, we have experienced uh, certain projects na parang they send over an item and they say, hey, we need it now, na we need it now, na, mm. <laughs> For whatever external factors happened. And the thing is, that's when we're super stressed. Because when it's said that, okay, we need this right now, and we're not ready because we didn't schedule it, because usually we have other schedules there, that's when things get tight. Because you can do the work, but with all the stress coming up, you work a bit slower. So I think uh, just like any co- uh, just like any collaboration, when it's when there when you are able to discuss a timeline, talaga, regardless if the schedules are a bit tight, if you can discuss it and both parties can agree to it, then for me that commitment is the, is gold there. 
Yeah, we've had a uh, recent content that we've done. Uh, there was a, t- a complete timeline. So, like, I guess in a two weeks' time, per date, there would be expectations for certain outputs that they would want at a certain time. And that would also really help us in managing our time here at home with whatever else we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. We so, uh, so uh, shout out to all the agency peeps out there who make amazing content guidelines with like all the details. We love you guys yeah. so super much. super na We appreciate it. Okay, just one thing I don't know lang ah baka may matamaan dito and sana meron. Um super we super praise good content guidelines talaga. And because when we see it we're like, "Oh my god, so for example, this is so easy. We kind of it's like you're speaking to us." Tsaka, ano, para walang balikan, di ba? Yeah, like, walang yeah, yeah. Na, Ay, nakalimutan pala namin to. Everything is just there. We don't have to go back and forth with anything. And it saves so much time for all parties. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I second that. So, yung mga brands here, please. <laughs> <As you're>, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> Work with us, please. <laughs> Okay. Uh, sorry. I, I just wanted to squeeze in this question before the others because I really think it's uh, it's it's really interesting. Uh, so from Jenny Agrade, Jenny, you want to say hi? hi Jenny. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, hey, Jenny, BCM, for arranging this webinar. Um, well, influencer marketing here in the Philippines is we all know continuously growing. So I, I think it's becoming more of a standard, or it's becoming more conventional, even with the pandemic. So yeah, my question is, how do we improve the buying decisions of users with unbiased opinions? Because as we all know, fans can get really critical. Uh, they can easily say, na, oh, that opinion is paid. So how do we show them that uh, we have biased, uh, unbiased opinions? Sorry. I think integrate it with the personal experience more than anything. Um, I think the best kind of content that I've ever created are content that are so true to what I'm currently going through and what I'm currently doing. So, for example, I saw Megan doing a post recently and her post was for a, a, a parcel company and she said something like she's sending out games to a friend of hers and a lot of people know that she's a gamer. So I think that was really, really um effective for me naman i i talked about sending out books to my friends because a lot of people know that i love reading books and that i give it away after i read them so i think to create that kind of unbiased storytelling you have to be able to incorporate it with a factor in the influencer's life that a lot of their audiences know is true about them so if for example I do a post that's about gaming and people know I'm not a gamer. I have never been a gamer my whole life. They will think it's really a ploy to try and get them to buy something. But if I use the product or the brand into something that I actually personally use and I'm interested in, I think that's when it becomes an effective storytelling. So that's for me on my end. How about you guys? Totally agree with it. Um, Thanks for liking my Pokemon package, by the way. <laughs> I love it. I love the work that you use. Ang ganda ng setup mo doon. Magaling yung art dip sa Daesa. Thank you. Mostly her. Thank you. 10% me. <laughs> what a support. Uh, I, I I agree. Uh, that's some. Uh, that's also something that we uh, that Bones and I do. So we always use personal experiences and storytelling. Storytelling is something I'd always repeat when it comes to my content. What story are you telling? And usually our stories come from personal experiences. Mm-hmm. So I think that if you can, if people, if the audience can find truth in what you are selling or what you're promoting or the brand that you're collabing with, uh, I think that must my connection yun. Yeah. Whether or not may nakalagay na paid ba or paid posts or sponsored posts. But 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 I have one another yeah, story. Something to tell. That we also Sorry, something about. else. So this is a flip side. So that's us from a content creative side. But I also look at this from a customer side. So uh, there are many times when I'm scrolling through uh, Instagram and I find someone. I don't even remember the person doing it, but they were promoting something. And it made me want to buy that that particular product from that particular brand simply because I was reminded of it. So I think there still is an aspect of uh, brand awareness and just being present in the mind space of people. And I think that's why uh, at the end of the day, you know, to a certain to a certain extent, reach is still very important because there are some brands who are really just looking for that mind space 
uh, and maybe not conversions right away. Maybe that uh, maybe acquiring mind space in the consumers will eventually lead to conversions. Yeah. Pero parang yun yung first and foremost goal nila. Other goals naman of other campaigns is actually conversions and sales. So I guess it also really depends. I talk about this a lot also with my friends who are in agencies. I'm like, so ano ba talaga? Uh, what is the priority here? And I guess it's case to case. But in reference to what you were asking, that storytelling point of Joyce definitely hit the nail on the head for, I guess, all three of us. And I think it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? That it's been such a, I guess, like strength for creators such as yourselves that you get to you get to do the glam thing, but you also get to do the personal thing, and it works out well uh, for brands also because now you get you know you you get to endorse brands and, and products in the way that you actually use them. And it's not just like the glitz and glam that uh, that we're you know so familiar with. Okay. Um, Sorry, we're we're running out of time, so I'm gonna take on this uh, like last one. <laughs> um, but I I think it's been an overall success. I think we should do this more often. Uh, I don't know. Kung approve ni ni Miss Betchay, we do this. Uh, we can do this again. Um, all right. Sorry. Last few questions. Uh, this one's from Keisha. Keisha, you wanna say hi? Oh, I'm kind of nervous now because you mentioned that you also get nervous. It's okay. <laughs> it's cool. You got this, girl. Mutual nervousness. Yeah. Um, I think it's really cool that you mentioned Kumu. Um, because actually it's something that we wanted to explore and we believe it has a, there's a lot of potential there. And we've actually pitched it to some of our clients already. But uh, a lot of them are still very afraid or very hesitant to try the app, the platform since it's not that big compared to the other platforms. Um, wouldn't we tell them like when we whenever we pitch? to better sell the platform, to better get them, you know, on it. Well, oh, one, that's so interesting. Yeah. That's There's such actually a good so question. much that we can tackle with it. But one thing that I really noticed about Kumu is grabbing yung community nila. Like, you may not see them as much like, outside of their platform, but inside their platform, grabe yung support ng ng community. Um, they have these things called campaigns where you can win certain products. So if you have a number of, let's say, their in-app currency is diamonds. So for this campaign, if somebody sends you this amount of diamonds, you will win the top prize kung ikaw yung may pinakamaraming diamonds. And that's how I'm able to like see all these brands collaborate with Kumu. Um, there was one campaign that na really tumatak sa akin kasi syempre, gaming console si yung, ano, yung mga prizes nila. So for the top tier, for the number one, it was I think a PS4. Five, yeah. Four, a four. A four. Okay. Wala wala pa oh my oh. god. Oh okay, wala na. Hindi na gamer. <laughs> okay, go. Anyways, PS4. <laughs> tapos may Nintendo Switch. And then there was a Nintendo Switch Lite for the tier three. Um and people were doing these campaigns. They were streaming continuously. You had to send diamonds in stickers form para you know people could earn. And People were constantly campaigning. Like every single person that you would see on Kumu was doing these campaigns. And for me, that's marketing already in itself because you know people are constantly talking about your brand on the get-go and they're trying to vie for the top prize. Yeah, to, to add to Bonizi's description, um, I think maybe maybe brands are looking for something quantitative but uh, sometimes the qualitative qualities of uh, of a certain platform just can never be uh, translated into a number yeah. with kumu with the game show believe me even us we were surprised Super. uh coming from tv we did the first game show the first episode of quiz moho and we were blown away by the amount of interaction and the amount of energy that you receive because it's a live show and Joyce touched on this how you can feel the energy even though it's a live virtual event grabe yung energy ng uh, mga users sa Kumu and it's something that uh, you have to experience as well which is why I invited everyone to the game show tonight guys yeah. <laughs> yeah, tonight thank you because it's masaya and it's a, it's a journey it's an adventure it's an adventure watching uh, our game show as well as just content on Kumu 
Also tonight, I wait. No Wednesday pa. On Friday, our price is fifty thousand pesos. So, <laughs> oh my God! Good job, though. Next week it's seventy five, and the week after on Friday it's one hundred thousand pesos. Woo! Yeah, no, but the, uh, go, jumping back to the question of Keisha, I, I, there is a, there there are uh, qualitative aspects of platforms, specifically Kumu, that you just have to be on it. To be able to describe it and to be able to understand, uh, in terms of metrics, you can always ask for the numbers from the marketing person of Kumu. They'll always give it to you. But the qualitative parts, talaga, is like woo. You'll feel it. You'll feel it when you're on it. Actually. And I also think it's great to try something new, even for us. Like being on a platform that we had no idea about in the in the beginning. Like we didn't know what we were getting into, but we were curious about it and we were excited about it because we were like, ano kaya to, no? Because this is also how we felt with Instagram. Instagram when it first came out, yeah. we didn't know what Instagram was or what it could have been. We just thought it was a place where we could post photos or videos, and we were like, "Bakit ako maging Instagram? May Tumblr naman ako, may Multiply, 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 <laughs> Multiply naman ako." So <laughs> it was actually pretty fun just getting into it yeah. because it was scary but also exciting at the same time. Yeah. So for the brands out there that are willing to experiment and be a bit more adventurous. Then yeah, definitely. I think uh, uh, these new platforms are a place to play around and mm-hmm. access new, newer things. Oh, Chaka, I think when it comes to like even for us, you don't know unless you try it. I mean, you're not sure talaga kung may maging successful or unsuccessful ang isang bagay if you don't really just try to dip your feet into it. Because you have to actually see kung babagay nga ba to yeah. itong platform na to sa amen or sa brand amen. I think it's I think it's the right mindset not to follow the platform but to follow the attention. Right? We we said TV, radio, newspaper would never die, and yet here we are talking about podcasting, YouTube, mm. TikTok, Kumu. Yeah. Um, I think change is inevitable, and if you are platform agnostic but you're following the attention, I don't think you'll ever go wrong. And if there's anything that you have to remember at this point in time, this is the time to explore new things. Yeah. yeah. So if there's any season for for brands and for for agencies to try out new things, whether it's Kumu or podcasting or whatever digital platform it is, this is the time because everyone's online, everyone's at home, everyone's on their phones and on their computers. So if there's any time better time to explore, it's now. Sorry, just last question because we're running out of time. Okay, this is uh, from uh, I want to say Caesar Caesar. <laughs> so he made a very interesting point here. Uh, he's been working with PCM for uh, for more than a year now, and I think this is a nice uh, way to wrap up. Um, he wants to know how influencers will tackle brands and projects within the COVID climate, uh, specifically those that require on-site shoots and content creation. Hey Caesar, uh, checking out your question now, and I, I find it super cool that you believe that believe in giving us creative control and freedom super appreciate it uh because it always allows us to run wild uh, whenever we're pr- producing anything he's literally running while shooting <laughs> um as the um tackling brands and projects within the covid climate especially those that require on-site shoots or content creation uh, I'm not particularly sure what you're referring to. Are you referring to the actual like how to execute it? Like w- what should be considered when you're executing? Or what kind of creative concepts can be outputted during the COVID considering climate. that we have COVID climate? So I- I'm wondering which one you were touching on just so that we can kind of answer your question specifically. Uh, I'm actually pertaining more on those that would require you to go out to the specific locations because as we know uh, it's always a risk to go out now uh, the more mm. we go out the more we are exposed so I was wondering if it would be it would be a factor from um, starting today or onward until we actually uh-huh. get to a better place if going out to work on content for a brand would be or how the yeah, factor to us. be handling it. Yeah. 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 Well, we definitely had some shoots um, during GCQ. Um, and what was great about these shoots was that we had 
safety guidelines that were set to us. I think the number one thing that we're thinking of during these times is how can I be safe? How can the agency or the brand assure me na magiging safe ako habang nagsushoot ako? Kasi um, one concern that we have is as artists, we're the ones without a face mask and a face shield while we're shooting. So, um, any safety protocols for the people around us during the shoot, how many people will be there. And that actually helps us be more confident in stepping outside of our homes. Um, another factor is um, if it's not completely required in as a studio, like let's say we're not doing like a photo shoot or a commercial shoot, what if it's content that we can create within our space or within like the the grounds of our community here. Um, what can be the turnaround for that? So, yun lang naman. Kung kailangan lumabas, um, safety guidelines really help reassure us if there's a test before going to the shoot that also helps reassure us na, okay, um, I know that uh, me and the people that I'll be working with have been tested and we can be safer in that space. Yeah, uh, I guess to be blunt also, just to answer your question, um, we've had several shoots outside of our house but we collaborated on the safety protocols mm -hmm. and really looked for something to make us feel confident to be out there because um, what is your wealth if you have no health yeah so uh, that, that's really something that we have and we're definitely definitely scared of covid i'll be honest uh, with you guys uh, and there have been projects where we said okay is there an option to shoot this at home is there an option to do that at home and we maybe we weren't as confident in the safety protocols mm -hmm. presented that we had to say we had to kind of beg off so that definitely is there and it definitely is a factor but we're also definitely willing to listen because nobody has the tried and tested yeah uh talaga. nobody has this tried and tested system to completely eliminate this mm -hmm. but if there's concerted effort from all parties concerned to really implement safety pro safety pro protocols that will make everyone, not just us, it has to be everyone uh, to the people in production yeah, from the agency peeps. One thing that we were concerned about was not just our safety, but also the safety of everyone else, the yeah. agency, the brands, that uh, the people representing the brands, even the crew members that would be a part of this. Their safety and your safety is also something that we're thinking of at dapat pantay pantay lahat. Yeah, so yeah, that, it def, it's definitely a factor. Well, I guess that's a, that's a great way to end. Joyce, Mikael, Megan, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm not nervous anymore. So after <laughs> nice. it's only took us two hours together for me to stop shaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for our guests, thank you so much. Um, I can, I hope the VCM team hears this, but uh, we want to be able to make this a regular thing and have more conversations and dialogue with uh, our celebrity influencers. Yeah, um, so that's it everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, stay safe and uh, yeah, have a good rest of the week. Thank you everyone. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed. Take care everyone. Thanks, Bye. Miggy. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Good job, Miggy. Great job.